Although Holly has shown every sign of working very well on her own, I just wanted to let her have a chance to work with an older, more experienced dog, get her into that cover, and we had hoped to see a pheasant come out of here, and I thought then I would actually need the older dog to retrieve the pheasant, as Holly's still a bit small. Good girl. Sick on, sick on, sick on. Good girl, good girl, good girls. Good girl, stick on. Good girl, it. where is it? Good dogs, you stick them out. Where is it? To walk these dogs together properly, I'm going to have to have them both on the leads together walking on my left Good. side, which they aren't used to yet. This is her first time out with Lottie. I was saying that at times it can be useful to have an older dog leading a younger dog. In this case, as the puppy gets into the car, we see her just up, leap up straight away dogs. with no problems at all, not Good having to be lifted, simply following the older dog. You find him. Your efficiency shooting will be down to a fraction of what it can be without a dog, both in finding the birds in the first place, but mainly in retrieving them efficiently afterwards. Imagine this especially on wildfowling, where the bird is across water or in water and you simply can't reach it. It's not fair to go shooting if you don't have good dogs working with you. Very important. Yes. Come on then, come on then, come on then. Good girl. Good girl. Shooting is only a fraction about going out and killing something with a gun. There's the whole ethos of it, training the dogs, the beaters being placed in the right position, having an enjoyable day out in the countryside, having food at the end of it, social. Uh, there's so much more to shooting than just going out with a gun. Good dog. Good girl. Holly here. Holly here. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. Good dog. Drop it now. Drop it. Drop it. Good dog. Drop it. Good dog. Good fetch. Good dog. Yes. Holly here. Holly here. Holly here. Good girl. Good girl. Holly here. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. Good dog. Can I put in now? Holly here. What's this? Look. What's this? See? Go fetch. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Holly here. Holly here. Holly here. Good dog. Good dog. Yes. What are you doing, Holly? OK, let's say you've been invited to a nice day shooting, possibly a driven day. What are you to expect? What are the social niceties? First of all, make sure you know where you're going on the map so you're not going to be late. Timekeeping is very important. Make sure you have the right dress code. Make sure you have the right weapon, the gun, the amount of cartridges you require and the correct ones. Uh, make sure you know what's happening for lunch, whether you're taking your own or whether it's being provided, how much money you're going to require and for the beaters. If you do have a dog and want to take it, then you need to ask whether that's possible because your dog may just stand by you most of the time. There will already be uh, pickers up, that is people with dogs standing behind you possibly to pick the birds up who will be paid as with the beaters. You may not need your dog or if you do it has to be for, uh, well trained and stay at the peg with you. You may only have a chance to use it once or twice during the day. When you arrive you possibly won't be in your Wellingtons. If you're going to uh, a guest shoot then you may be invited indoors first for a cup of tea or a chat with the other guns, in which case you'll need your brogues or shoes, not your mucky old wellies. Make sure you understand what you're going to shoot before you start. Is ground game allowed? Are you allowed to shoot rabbits or hares? Is vermin allowed to be shot, pigeons or jays or magpies or anything else on the shoot? Or are you only after pheasant only? The shoot may be very light-hearted and friendly as this one is, but equally safety is always very, very important and you'll be in a line of guns. So once you're out in position online, you need to say hello to the guns either side of you and you need to know the system. The system that is of which peg you're going to. Notice how I take my gun safely out of the case here, broken, and then check the barrels to make sure there's no obstructions even before we start shooting. If you're seen to be safe, it puts the guns at ease either side of you. Before you start, a little bit of gambling. You'll be offered a peg number. A little wallet will be passed to you and you have to take one of these little plastic strips out that has a number on it. That number is the peg that you will start at. Then you need to know how the rest of the system will work. Will you be moving up two numbers during the drive every time? If so, how many guns are there before you're back to where you were? Or a different number all the way through? It can be a bit confusing and you have to remember those numbers. Note the way that I just picked up my empty cartridge cases there and put them away to save the keeper having to go around later and time the mess up. I've already explained about taking birds either side or behind. You don't shoot along the line or low, you only shoot birds high up in the sky. 
have courtesy and manners at all times, even if a gun near you doesn't. If a bird is passing in front of you and want to make a much better target for him, call your bird to him and let him have it. It shows good manners. Equally, you shoot birds that are in your half or your quarter. If he starts shooting your birds, it's not good manners. If, on the other hand, he misses with both barrels, and you can then take the bird behind, it shows your skill, and he might have a laugh about that, but don't start shooting other person's birds or showing off uh, rather than your own. So far I've just been talking about you yourself with one gun, but there are permutations of this. You might have a loader with you to help load your gun more quickly if it's a driven shoot, so many birds coming over. Yeah. You might be double gunning and have to work out with your loader how you'll pass one gun from him to you and you to him. Good girl. Drop it. That's a good girl. Drop it. Good job. Fetch it. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Take it to your dad. Remember, this is supposed to be a fun day out for everybody, not just for you. Even if you've paid for your gun, the other beaters and everybody else wants to enjoy their day as well. And for the keeper, the pride in the culmination of good shooting, of manners and courteous uh, behaviour, plus a good bag is much more satisfying. And of course at the end of the day don't forget to give your money for the beaters and those helping and the keeper. He'll give you your two birds. If you want more birds ask him. Sometimes he'll give you more, other times you offer to pay for them. And of course make sure you thank your host at the end of the day and send him a letter of thanks later. A small gift to your host before the shoot wouldn't go amiss. Maybe a bottle of slow gin? <laughs> Gun down, won't ya? Come along. Good dog. Yes, you ready then on this drive? Should come through these trees up here, shouldn't they? Nice. Good dog. Good cop, then. Good dog. Go fetch it. Go fetch. Good dog. Is it there? Good dog. Fetch it up. Come on, good girl. Come on, good dog. Come on in. Come on. It's a big bird for you, isn't it? Come on. Hop. Good girl. Good dog. Come on in. Good girl. Good girl. Good dog. Come on in. Good girl. 
Good dog. There we are. Drop. Come here. Good dog. Good girl. Fish it there. Hop. Good girl. Get back. Good dog. Fish it there. Fish it there. Good dog. Good girl. Good dog. Come then. Good dog. Good girl. 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 Ditch somewhere. Come on, get up. Good girl. Rosie, Rosie. Check that. Rosie, Rosie. Over here, go. Go on. That's a good girl. Yes. It's a lovely bird, isn't it? Hmm? Uh, Patrick got his pheasant. Go fetch, go fetch. Good girl. Good doggy, what a clever girl. Come on then, that's a good dog. Drop it, there we go. Yes, good dog. Sit down now. Keep holding the dog, please! Hold the dog! Keep holding the dog! Hold the dog! Get on, get on. Push it there, push it there. Good girl, come on. Come on then. Come on. Here, here, here. Drop. Good dog. Go back to it. Dog. Come on, hop. Good dog, drop. Good girl, yeah. Uh, sit down. <laughs> Too low. Yeah. 
Yes. You say hello. You say hello. It's good dogs. Yeah, it's good dogs. Come on, Holly. Holly here. We hope. Don't we, doggy? Oh, we'll stay sort of parallel with the handler. Yep. Miretta, good girl. Good girl. Sit down there, that's a good girl. Good dogs. I meant to sit him down to have your dog. That's alright, no. That's fine, I've got it all on the uh, cameras, that was good. I'd like to get a, get one today, yes, yeah. but that's all right. We've got plenty of time yet. Yeah. Holy state. <laughs> the one place we couldn't get it, mug. <laughs> Come on, good dog. You know, you know. Good dog, come on. Holy hip. Come on, holy hip. Holy hip, come on, up. Push it hip. Good dog, come on. Good girl. Good dog. Drop. There's a good girl. Yes. Sit. Yes. Only go fetch. Only go fetch. Go fetch him. Go fetch him. Good girl. Get on. Go fetch. Good girl. Only go fetch. Get on. Get on. Get on. Good dog. Good girl. Good dog. Good girl. Good girl. Come on, yeah. good girl, what a good dog. Come on, in. good girl. Here, 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 this is here, good girl. Come on, all the way. There's a good dog, there's a good girl. Sit 
Да. That's a good dog. We got all that confirmed, didn't we? There's a good girl. Good dog. Good girl. That was a good shot. Yes. Good dogs. Good dogs. Does he want to shoot him with no ground game? He does, alright. You just see that? No, 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 Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Come here, sit down. Come over here, come on. Good girl. Over! Good girl. Many people tend to associate very high driven birds with counties such as Devon and Cornwall, but in fact, up here in the Lincolnshire Wolds, there is some wonderful shooting. It's simply a matter of working out the best way to use the layout of the land. In this case we're driving the birds from the top of hills to the top of the next hill and the guns are standing in the valley. And you see some of the birds are almost over 100 yards high, some of them out of range actually, but certainly very testing shots. <laughs> Just look at these very high pheasant going over the valley here, well over 100 yards high, and actually looking like sparrows rather than pheasants.
you briefly what we're doing. As I was saying, shooting doesn't always have to be very expensive. Pigeon shooting may be had free from various farmers who'd want you to go on their land, but of course you've got to get permission. In this case, a walked up uh, day's ground shooting will not cost me as much as going on a, a driven day where you've got to pay for all of the beaters and further expenses. So it's something I could just afford that one time in my life. Of course, in this situation, as in rough shooting, it's great to be able to work your own dog. But of course, bear in mind health. I was a bit younger then, I could only just manage it then with my bad back. But now I'd never manage it. In such a case, it may be better to seek a gun in a smaller syndicate, where they'll be more sensitive to your needs. And as a more mature gun, hopefully they'll place you in situations where you don't have to walk. Uh, you may not get as many birds, but at least you can just wait for the occasional one being driven through and be a stop or fill a gap somewhere where the birds can slip away. Of course, if you can afford it, the more expensive shoots will drive you to the pegs anyway. As you've seen even with the other syndicates, they nearly always have some form of transport, either a tractor and trailer or they're carried about by 4x4s. Well that brings us to the end of this section on game shooting and I hope my few pointers have helped you if you didn't know much about it before with your understanding and uh, knowledge of the sport and if you're an old hand maybe you'll have enjoyed seeing some of the pleasure that I've had. Now let's move on to another discipline. Now you're entering a completely different sport and ball game. We're not out with gentry in the countryside now. It'll just be you or maybe one other friend in a hide on your own enjoying that particular environment and those particular difficulties. You will be in an entirely individual hunting situation so you have to think like the prey that you're hunting for. You have to understand what you're after, when they will come, where they will come, what they're after and how to draw them in to you to be able to shoot them. I will talk about individual equipment in more depth, but let's just go through the list I've got up here. Obviously you're going to need a gun, you're going to need the right camouflage equipment to hide yourself, you're going to need hides themselves, portable hides that you can easily carry and construct. You'll need the right gear for all sorts of weather, whether it's snow, wind, rain, sunshine, because pigeon shooting and the wildfowling can happen right the way through the season, the pigeon shooting right through the summer and, and into the winter, and the wildfowl in the winter especially. Headgear, seating, uh, footwear, hearing protection, um, game bags, everything, and the decoys as well, specialist decoys, and the way to handle those, to set them up. All of this I'm going to have to show you. Anyway, there's a basic list here, and now we'll go into more detail on how uh, to go about using these.